and welcome. I'm excited to have everybody here. Can you hear me okay? I don't want to put it too close and have a bunch of static or feedback. So I want to start with a question. How many of you have experienced fear so strong that you started to shake? Like physical body, right? Or you've had grief so strong that you had no choice but cry. The tears came out. It was uncontrollable. Or you've heard a song that came on and you had no choice but to get up and dance, right? Or sing or whatever, whether you're in the shower or the car, wherever it is. Those are large examples of how emotions appear for us through our body in resonant frequency. And I'm gonna talk through that a little bit more. Emotion is energy in motion. Each emotion <laughs> is a vibration. Each has a frequency. Each of them speaks through frequency in our bodies. And it's also how the universe speaks to us and how we speak to each other. Frequency. And it shows up in a lot of different ways. Emotion that comes up subconsciously shows up in behavior, in decision making, in our relationships and how we choose our relationships, how we choose our job and our career. All kinds of things show up. And frequency, which is subconscious, can drive those behaviors in ways that we don't know about or understand. And emotions from trauma and experiences can get trapped in our bodies in various places. Even emotion that, and trauma that is inherited from our ancestors can show up. It's been shown in many different studies, including mouse studies, where they can impact the mother and they correspond scent with pain and then the, mo the mama has mice, baby mice, and two generations later, they expose them to the scent, but not the pain, and they have the reaction. So we see it in human beings as well as they've studied emotional patterns and as they, as they expand themselves into uh, human behavior. It gets trapped in the body's organs, in the energy field. So we might talk about meridian pathways, we might talk about energy centers, and in all the energetic elements of the body. I mentioned subconscious emotions. 90% of our emotions, our thoughts, our beliefs, our feelings are subconscious. We don't know about them. We don't remember what happened to us when we were two years old. We don't remember all of the emotions we experienced in a car accident. But they're there and we've experienced them. And they resonate as frequency in the body and they communicate with us. They cannot be resolved through talk therapy because we don't know them. We don't have memory of them. They might come up as flashes. They might come up as in your dreams or something in a memory trigger and you don't understand it at that point in time, but it is there. It does require us to think differently about how we address the subconscious emotional. And we're gonna talk about some of those things today. It will stop us from choosing our best for our lives. It, does, it can override the best New Year's resolution. Doesn't matter how excited you are about that New Year's resolution, the, these emotional patterns and beliefs will stop you. That's why people start, they're good for a week, maybe two, maybe a month, and then right back into those patterns, okay? It can cause dis-ease and will keep people there in disease and will trigger health mysteries. Doesn't show up on a blood test, doesn't show up on an MRI but it exists and you're experiencing it and you don't know why. So who am I? Juliana Sauber, <laughs> formerly a very stressed out corporate executive. I spent 20 years in manufacturing. I stressed myself to the max. I was a go-getter. I could get anything done. Didn't matter how big the project or hard the project, I could do it. I could overcome it. I could work as many hours as was needed. I could party on the weekends and I could work my tail off 70 hours a week but it led to a whole lot of illnesses that I didn't understand and that no doctor could tell me how to handle. Extreme exhaustion was one of the big ones. I could fall asleep at a stoplight. I slept through two stoplights one time, foot on the brake. It took a semi truck to wake me up. Um, I had a frozen shoulder, couldn't lift my arm above here. I had many different types of headaches that were triggered by many different things. I had hormonal imbalance that led to five abdominal surgeries, which then has left me with scar tissue and meridian imbalance and all kinds of other things that come along with that many abdominal surgeries. So I'm dealing with all these issues, but I thought I was tough, right? 
I thought I could handle any bit of it until I collapsed, literally collapsed. I had actually left my job because I'd started my naturopathy program and I had left my full-time career because I was gonna dive into school and I was gonna start a wellness practice and everything was gonna be great. It's great, I was so excited. And I get home and my body went, wait, you're gonna let us rest? Okay, six months in front of the television. And I didn't do much for six months. My husband would come home and I'm still in my jammies and he's like, so anything about dinner? <laughs> no, no, no energy for that. So I finished my naturopathy program and I was doing great things with food and herbs and supplements. Love them, support them, think they're amazing. And then I had a client sitting at my table who, no matter what we did, she couldn't keep a supplement down, she couldn't, she couldn't juice, she couldn't even keep juice down. She was losing weight and getting progressively worse. And she sat through a session with me for 45 minutes and talked about how worried she was about her son, how fearful she was of the path he was going down. And she's in tears and sobbing and her physical body is racked. And I, it immediately hit me, this is emotional. Her issue is not physical. This is not a lack of nutrients. Not that she wasn't lacking nutrients, but nutrients weren't gonna solve the problem. And I didn't have anything in my toolkit at the time to be able to help her. And that bothered me. So I started learning from some people that you see the pictures here, Dr. Candace Pert, the molecules of emotion. She was an NIH and Johns Hopkins scientist who discovered that when you have an emotion, there's a polypeptide chain that's created that creates a protein, that protein goes into your cells and it triggers a cellular response. Enough of those exposures and you change the DNA. Dr. Bruce Lipton, biology of belief, incredible man. Cell microbiologist, taught at some of the best medical universities. He started digging into what actually a cell really is and along the way he discovered the impact of emotions and the mental body on your ability to heal, the placebo effect, the nocebo effect. Okay, Dr. Bradley Nelson, who pioneered the Emotion Code. And the Emotion Code is an incredible tool. I recommend everyone who wants to learn this tool. It's incredible. It's the starting point for helping you to clear these subconscious emotional traumas. He has web videos, webinars, books, everything. I became certified in the Emotion Code because I wanted to help my clients clear that emotional trauma. It's been studied extensively. A lot of people ask me, is there any science? Absolutely. There's a ton of science. I can't go into all of it right now. Studies have shown the biological mechanisms. Water has memory. How much are we of water? 70 plus percent, right? So water has memory. The emotional traumas imprint on the cellular memory. I'll go into that in a little bit. And they've studied the connections between emotions and health. Even Freud said it over 100 years ago. If you don't process the emotions, they're gonna get buried alive. They'll come up in an uglier way and they really do. We know that the research and experience has connected it with not only the potential for illness, but the potential for wellness. We have to understand that emotional body, how it works within our bodies, how to clear it, how to do that amazing, important work, and then the thriving can be achieved. So your supplements work better, your meditations work better, all of the, you know, your time in the sunshine works better because you're emotionally there, your life is better, your relationships are better, stress goes down. The list goes on and on and on. So this is important. It's also been documented in ancient medical texts such as Ayurveda and Chinese medicine as a critically important component of health. So we can use feeling, frequency to clear feeling. So being tough, has taken place of processing emotion. Okay, we're a stressed out, busy society, right? We have a lot going on. I got kids to worry about, I got work, I got this, the boss's colleague stuff's going on. I don't have time to deal with the fact that a family member just passed away. I'll deal with it at the funeral and then I'll go on. And so what, what happens to that emotional energy is we stuff it. As children we're told, don't cry, buck up, get moving, brush yourself off and keep going. And so as adults, what we learn to stuff at all, we don't process any of it. And we don't have language for emotion either. We aren't taught emotional language. So we don't actually know how to process it very well and release it. So that energy embeds itself in various places in our body and in our physical tissues and our energetic systems. This image here is um, one version of the image of the vagus nerve. So if you look at the vagus nerve, 
if you were to look at various images of it, it connects neurologically to everything in our body. What the vagus nerve's primary job is, if you're in stress, it turns on and turns off certain body systems. So if you're in stress, you're in fear, you're in fight or flight, whatever it is, you don't need to digest food because you're running from a bear. You don't need to digest food. You don't need to process thought or emotion. You need to survive. And most Americans, most humans, live in constant fight or flight. We live in that space. Again, it's the job, it's the worries, it's the finances, the kids, soccer practice, this, that, you know, dishes, laundry, the whole nine yards. We don't let any of that go because we have to have a perfect house and a perfect image and we've got to make sure we do all the things. But what we end up doing is creating this situation where the body becomes out of balance energetically and then it becomes harder and harder to process those emotions as they come through. So we have layering of emotions as we're children. We have layering of emotions that we've inherited from our, our um, kids or our uh, ancestors. And then we have this layering of emotion as we're adults and we're stressed out. So it layers on top of each other. So it gets turned on because we're taught in society how to turn it on, but we are not taught how to turn it off. So we talk about meditation, which is great, but coming from a stressed out type A, go, go, go person, forget meditating. Mm -hmm. It wasn't gonna happen. I learned how to meditate while moving <laughs> because at the very least I was releasing energy at that point in time. So, I mean, there's so many different types of meditation, but I was not gonna sit for 45 minutes and be quiet. No way this brain was gonna shut off. It's gotten better, but it took me years to get there. It's been documented by various individuals that certain emotions are, are stored in various organs. So worry is studied in the kidneys, especially worry about money. Uh, the lungs store grief, anger and resentment in the liver and gallbladder. How many people get removed, gallbladders removed on a regular basis in this country? Is it because of anger and resentment as a possibility, as a possible component of that? Disgust in the muscles. I discovered this one because I had basically what would have been diagnosed as fibromyalgia if I had pursued a diagnosis. Physical, I, I call it sticky burning pain, like sticky burning muscles. Disgust was the number one thing. I was disgusted with how my life was and what I had chosen. And I was disgusted with how my physical body looked and I wasn't healthy enough and I didn't have enough money and we didn't have a good house. And I was disgusted with all of it, just piled it on. And as I released that disgust and do the work, the pain starts to dissipate. That's a fun thing. The spleen is disappointment. And the spleen processes nutrients. It assimilates nutrients, one of our key things. So if you have high levels of disappointment about your life and you're trying to take in food and supplements, you're not gonna optimize what you're getting. So they both work together. So I mentioned that the human body speaks in frequency. Whoops, it did not go as far. So the human body speaks in frequency and resonance. And when it's in harmony, it runs really, really well. It's like an orchestra. I don't know if any of you guys were ever in band. You know who's out of tune, right? You know when that clarinet player hits the flat note <laughs> and it doesn't sound great. And that's really what symptoms are, is an indication of your body saying, hey, I got something out of tune. I need your help tuning it up. This communication is the universe and all of it is frequency. This chart I always find fascinating. It's from a book called Power Versus Force. This shows you the frequency that they've measured of various um, emotions. And if you look, if we go up to anger, which is at 150, 150 and below is about where most of society lives, right? We're angry, we have a lot of desire for things, we're in fear. Fear has been the number one emotion for the last 18 months. Grief, apathy, guilt, and shame. Even willingness is higher than those are. So I love a client who comes to me and is willing to start the process, because that's great. We're already vibrating at a higher frequency. And joy and love, of course, higher than that, because love is all of it. This is uh, National Institutes of Health studied the aura. They call it the biofield, same thing. The idea that we put this frequency out into our field. Now the heart can, can extend, the Heart Math Institute has said 20 to 25 feet is the heart expansion. Uh, at end of fingertips is pretty normal in terms of an energy field expansion. So you guys are all in each other's energy fields. All of that's communicating. So if you've ever sat in a room and you're sitting there and everything's fine and somebody comes in and they're angry and all of a sudden you're like, ooh, I don't know what's going on. 
I feel angry, what's happening? Their anger is communicating with your energy field and they're having a conversation. You know when you come across someone and you're like, mm, I'm not sure. There's something going on there. There's a communication happening there. Their subconscious emotional is having a conversation with your subconscious emotional and there's no harmony there. Or you meet someone in your instant connection. There's harmony there, okay? So that vibratory communication is happening. Everything is frequency, everything is energy. Food, supplements, essential oils, water. Be careful about water, we're gonna talk about this in a minute. The environment, the EMFs, the herbs, the essential oils, everything is all frequency. It has a communication. Everything we're exposed to has frequency. The words you say to yourself and to others has frequency, and I'll show you that here in a minute. Amazing study in there. As we lower our frequency, so if you think back to that chart of emotions, people are in lower frequencies, we open ourselves up to the lower frequency organisms. Parasites, bacteria, and mold, fungus, yeast. You notice I don't mention viruses. There's a purposeful reason for that. <laughs> Science is working to understand the frequency of these things, but they're really measuring it as sound. We now have the capability to measure it at a quantum level, um, which is even better. This is out of a study where they measured an exposure to the body of various frequencies and watched what symptoms came up when people were exposed to those frequencies. Tuning is needed. Really, health is about management of energy. We are energetic beings. No doubt about it, you've been shocked before, right? Rub the balloon, get a zap, we're energetic. And, and we talk about low energy. So we need to have batteries charged up. We need to get the interference out of the way and get the communication going very well. This is the story of, or the uh, research of Masaru Emoto, incredible man who wondered about the effect of words on water. So he did things like he spoke over a glass of water. He wrote on a piece of paper and taped it to the glass of water. He played music to the water. And then he looked at the crystalline structures of what happened after those exposures. Incredible stuff. Uh, it, you look at, you make me sick. We have to be careful what we speak over ourselves and our friends, families, and neighbors. Okay. This is another one. I like the middle one especially because 500 people sending love can change a lot. 100 people sending love. This room sending love can change a lot. And lots of studies have shown that, not just this one. So we have a lot of people doing some amazing pioneering work with frequency and how to heal with frequency. I mentioned Dr. Candace Pert. I will throw a few others. Hulda Clark, who's known for the zapper. She's the parasite lady developed the zapper in the 60s. That was frequency. We have Royal Rife, an incredible man, pioneered frequency technology. He wasn't the first one, but he really took it to a next level. Marcus Schmika and Nuno Nina. I'm gonna talk about those guys a little bit more today. Nuno Nina has been working in Europe. He has six clinics. Uh, Portugal is his home base. He's been healing with frequency for multiple decades. He's incredible. He partnered up with Marcus Schmika, who is a quantum physicist. And together they created a healing technology that's incredible. I want to talk into just a little bit more about why quantum is important. I studied quantum frequency, not an expert, quantum physics for about four years as a neophyte. And there's some incredible things that they've discovered. This is the true like essence of how we are structured, where we come from, the spark of life as it were. 96% of the universe is dark energy, dark matter. So this is where we're working when we work at the quantum level. I actually created a, a process that I worked with my clients before I got involved with frequency healing called an ease and flow energy process. The idea was to draw stress out of the body energetically using sound, essential oils, word therapy. I do lots of different things with word and affirmations uh, because the idea is that I wanna teach people, you are in charge of this. And here are the tools you can use to do that. You all got a little piece of a blue slip of paper. It's a class that I put out, Freedom From Fear. It's a 45 minute class. It'll teach you how to do some of this work for yourself to clear fear. This isn't pushing through it. This is getting down into the roots of it, finding it, pulling it out, getting rid of it. It's gone, okay? So we've, individuals who've studied it have, have found specific notes work with specific parts of the body. 
So this is tuning fork and sound therapy. Okay? They studied essential oils, frequencies of essential oils. Now the beautiful part about how frequency works is if I were to add frankincense and bergamot together, it's not a one plus one. It's an exponential increase and improvement. They work synergistically together. They amplify each other. So when you combine them together, it works even better. I want to bring up one other thing. In homeopathy, we learn about miasm and DNA. So with miasm, we've got an illness that's ancestral. It's been around. It was not unresolved. And it carries through the genetics multiple generations. I hear, I hear it regularly. My grandmother had this and my mother had it. So it's been something that's carried through because it, it was something unresolved that changed the genetics and modified it. But because we know that something was changed, we know we can change it back. Because the DNA is, is, is um, responsive to the right kinds of inputs, all kinds of inputs. Okay. So this one, the miasm that I bring up, was me, the perfectionist. I was pushing myself beyond my limits ended up with all kinds of tendencies, addictions, food addiction primarily. Um, and it ends up becoming part of my energy field. Not anymore. So we need a broader perspective. We've got to look at this at a bigger picture level and we've got to do things a little bit differently. We do have to access the emotions in the nervous system. We have to bypass the ego, which is the conscious brain. Because the conscious brain can think up all the things it wants, but if the subconscious overrides it, we're not going to get there. So we have to work at the subconscious level. I found in my own journey I wanted to move faster. It just wasn't moving fast enough for me. I wasn't clearing enough of what I was dealing with. Physical pain was an issue for many, many years. And even though we have a growing number of naturopaths and, and individuals who work in natural medicine, the demand, I believe, in the next especially two years is going to outpace the supply. Uh, we just have to see what's happening in the allopathic world to see that it's coming. Healing is nonlinear. I was taught, and I taught my clients, you've got to peel the layers of the onion off. That requires prioritization. But only the body can know the exact priority that it wants to heal in. We can guess at it. We can muscle test for it. But the body really knows how, what order it wants to heal in. So emotion and energy are nonlinear healing episodes. It can go all over the place. We can peel off something that came from your grandma three generations ago. We can peel off something that happened to you two weeks ago. Those, for whatever reason, connect with each other. Energy moves faster than the physical density. Energy can heal that fast. Emotion can heal that fast. Physical body takes a little bit longer. I have seen people resolve things in a session. I've seen people resolve things in a couple of hours. I've seen things take weeks. Just depends on how deep and how long it is. So where do we find the way forward? Self-care is the revolution, right? Us taking care of ourselves first, knowing ourselves first, and having the tools to be able to do that properly and support ourselves. Individuals need all those methods and those tools accessible to you. It doesn't mean you have to understand it. It doesn't mean you have to research the science. If you like to do that, it's available. But it's not necessary for you to get there. It is important that you know yourself. And we have to look beyond food and supplements to the emotional roots of disease. And we always have to ask if we're being efficient with it. I have experienced where I took a supplement for a very long time, and I didn't take enough of it. I didn't take it frequent enough. I didn't do enough of the thing, sauna, as an example. right? So we have to determine, are we being as efficient with it as we can and doing it the right way? And I think that's where energetics and quantum comes in. Nikola Tesla, an amazing man, Incredible intuitive. Said so you got to look at energy, frequency, and vibration. So from naturopathy, I learned about Bach flower therapy uh, and essential oils. I then moved into the emotion code. Incredible. Uh, I developed the ease and flow energy technique, um, which includes sound, Reiki, and other subconscious reprogramming. I moved into quantum frequency healing, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. Stress reduction, hugely important. Um, I mentioned that I couldn't meditate. I wish I'd have known someone who could drain stress out of my body in a session because I would have done that on a regular basis. Uh, and um, I actually teach the ease and flow process to a lot of people because I want more people to know about it. So let's talk about quantum frequency healing for a second. 
To me, this is one of the most thorough approaches, especially if you don't go through the training and understand the education and spend the decade that, that sometimes takes to really get proficient. It takes out practitioner limitations. I recognize as a practitioner, I only know so much. And I'm only gonna know so much. Uh, we all have these limitations. Whereas when working with quantum frequency healing, specifically with the Healy, I now have access to, and anyone that has a Healy, is access to basically about 20 practitioners who have multiple decades of experience, who played into building a database uh, that supports people in their healing. So it's built on decades of work of various people. I mentioned Nuno Nina, important man. He created the Gold Cycle programs, which to me is about plugging in the batteries. So when your cell phone is dead, you go and you plug it in, right? How often do we plug in our bodies? How often do we send our bodies what it's needed to charge ourselves back up again? Charge those cells back up, get that quantum vibration back into harmony. We wanna clear the static in the energy field. To me, it's like when you turn on your radio, actually it's not true with digital radios anymore, but when we had dial radios and you got staticky radio stations and you had to tune in that radio station, that's what we're doing with frequency healing, is we're tuning in that radio station. Three broad areas of vitality and support. Cellular energy, super important. These cells need to function for us to move around, for this physical body to work. One of the things that microcurrent does is it helps with ATP, um, so adenosine triphosphate, that's your energy production out of your cells. It helps with protein synthesis and amino acid transport. That's a building block. So you're building your body, you're charging your body up. Scalar wave efficiency and depth. So we're working with scalar waveforms. Do I have, oh, it's probably a later slide. The effects, when we're talking about quantum frequency healing, are emotional, mental, and physical. We can support all three of those areas, which is great. It works on the cell voltage model. So the cell voltage model says that the cells at a healthy place are roughly negative 70 millivolts. Negative polarity is a healthy cell. Positive polarity is an unhealthy cell. EMFs, Wi-Fi, cell phone, Bluetooth, 5G, all positive polarity. So they move your cells closer to the place we don't wanna to go to um, is unhealthy cell exp um, uh, expression. So we're looking at inflammation, edemas, things along those lines. So that is where cellular energy needs to be charged up. I mentioned charging up the batteries. That's part of what uh, Healy does with quantum frequency healing. Sorry, this slide should have had a thing in it, but this is the ATP I was talking about. So this is up to a 40% improvement in amino acid transport, up to a 70% improvement in protein synthesis, and up to a 500% improvement of ATP production better than any energy drink on the, on the planet, and, and healthier for you. Um, this is, these are wavelength exposures. So we, we are exposed to all kinds of frequencies and they've measured various wavelengths. So you see sea creatures work at a slow, undulating kind of waveform. You get into protozoa and, and the smaller life forms, they go a little faster. We get into human beings, we get into DNA, the atoms, et cetera. We're moving in a fast oscillation. So it's a tall waveform and it, it oscillates much faster. This is where we're working when we work with quantum frequency healing. So we are getting down to the subatomic level, to the root of where health starts from. So I mentioned EMF we are exposed to and bombarded with these frequencies on a daily basis. I live fortunately in a house in the woods. I have a Schumann resonance generator. I don't have towers around me. I'm very fortunate that way. We got here, I stayed in the hotel last night, I woke up with a headache. I looked out the window, there's a 5G tower in the back. So I know that it's impacted me. So I, I go get more Shungite, I run my protection programs. Um, tonight I'll run well-being programs and vitalization programs because I need to reset my energetic field. So my body works well and it don't hurt because pain's not fun. So one of the things that Healy does is through the quantum, quantum sensor is it is measuring the information field of you. It measures your signature, which is individual, just like your thumbprint. It's very much your own. It will identify and find you anywhere in the planet. It then scans your field. It runs through an algorithm of that database of 144,000 frequencies and creates a program that is individualized for you. And then it sends it back to you. So we can send it back through the broadcast frequency, cell phones broadcast frequency, Healy can broadcast frequency. This is it. 
This is all the bigger it is. I carry it with me everywhere. And so any moment I can send frequency to myself or actually I can send frequency to my friends, my family, or my clients. I got a message from a family this past week. The whole group of them got sick. I then started sending frequency to the whole, whole crew for the next four or five days. So it can be done because we're living in a quantum universe anywhere and with anyone. And when I say anyone, I mean animals too. We have pigs. My pigs have gotten frequency. They, Boris loves it. He's my sad pig. He's my lover. And when I have to separate him and mama, he doesn't like it because she just had babies. So they have to be separated and Boris is sad. So I send frequency to Boris. He loves them. Now I mentioned the EMFs and the interference from the EMFs. So the, we have to isolate those. And so within the quantum, within the Healy is the Kazarev mirror. So what the mirror does is it takes in all these disparate frequencies and it bounces them off each other, which neutralizes them. In quantum frequency terms, it sets them back to zero point. That clears the static. And then it can measure you. And you can ask it a question. My right hip is bothering me. What can I use to support that? And it might come up with meridians. It might come up with digestion. It might come up with thyroid. There's any number of things it can come up with. Through the application of these scalar waveforms, we can accomplish a lot, physical, mental, and emotional. Whoops. So the Healy's here, it goes through a phone or a tablet. So most people have those, pretty easy to use. Does not require any knowledge whatsoever. We show you how to work it, you go on. If you wanna know more, you can know more. It's super easy to use, it is self-care. It really is incredible. Now it has things like it's, they've digitalized a frequency of supplements, of nutrients, minerals, trace minerals, amino acids, and cell salts, Schussler salts. So that's pretty amazing because I don't have to carry my supplements with me. I still take a few, but I don't take nearly as many as I used to. I also program my Healy. I can program in affirmations. I can program in supplements and homeopathics and things like that. Uh, I did a whole program for a client who had uterine fibroids. So there are many, many applications and many ways to help support this. One of the things I thought was super cool is that they understand that some of the practitioners are Chinese medicine practitioners who are tying into this, um, th to this technology. They understand the Chinese body clock. So if you've never seen the Chinese body clock, it's pretty fascinating. Because when I have clients come in and say to me, I wake up and I said, what time do you wake up? 2 a.m. every night, that's liver time. What did you eat late? Is your body processing excess sugar? Did you have some, did you get angry today? Like we can go down the list and we can help them resolve the liver piece of it. And the body itself moves into different modes throughout the day. So when you scan yourself at 10 in the morning, thinking about your right hip, your body will give you one answer then it'll give you at 4.30 in the afternoon because your body's moved into a different modality. And it's important to understand that, but you don't have to know it in depth, just know it. Just have that basic knowledge. So we're talking into um, a broad range of things. I mentioned 144,000 programs, or 144,000 frequencies, 120 programs and growing. They just added some more. Physical, mental, and emotional. Um, it is FDA cleared as a type two medical device. So it, it's in the same category as a TENS unit, but uh, when I had to use it for my son after a car accident, I called, him, I called it a fancy TENS unit. It really is far more than that. Um, and there isn't really many areas that it can't be beneficial. This is one of the programs they added recently. This actually helps to revitalize stem cell generation in the body. It brings back youth and vitality, helps your, your cells to regenerate themselves even healthier every time they regenerate. Um, because we do, we make new cells every 90 days. We have a whole new body every seven years. So we might as well make it a more energized, happier, better flowing, more in harmony body as we do it. Definitely good for anybody, any age, babies, seniors, anybody. And I mentioned the animals, horses, dogs, cats. Um, I haven't worked with any fish, but uh, <laughs> I would. If anybody's got a stress out beta fish. Um, so, but we have done a lot with animals because animals really resonate with frequency. My poor little min pin has a, a thyroid issue and he has a, um, a little uh, benign tumor on his chest that if we don't take care of it, it gets bigger and then it causes issues with the gallbladder and his leg wings out and he does silly things. And um, when I put him on the Healy, uh, he will lay on it. And then when he's done, he leaves. 
So I'll run the thyroid program for him. I'll run the digestive program because min pins are prone to digestive issues. And he's 14 and he runs like a puppy, the great dog. So I'm really thankful to be able to help him with that and to be really vital. This was uh, uh, some research that Healy did regarding, um, they had a survey where people used the Healy and then they reported, when did you feel difference? 24% after one application, another 24% after two. By the third application, you know, we had 80% of people reporting they saw a difference and it keeps going from there. I was thinking about the, the premise of this particular time in really in human history, but for this expo specifically, what is freedom? What are we looking at for freedom? And we're really looking at a lot of different things. Sovereignty, I own my health, I own my life. Agency, I make my own decisions. These are both really important right now. Intelligence, this is resources. You need resources, you need people to guide you, you need help. But in the end, you use that information to decide for yourself. And that's true for, I hope for, if you're seeing a practitioner, I hope that's true for them as well. I know it's true for me. I sit down with clients, I share information with them and I tell them now it's your turn to, to create your program. What do you wanna do? It's a different way of approaching it because so many people have, you know, you go to the guy in the white coat, he tells you what to do. This is a very different way of approaching it, but this is how we get our health back. That's so important. And it's gonna be even more important. You have to know how to analyze what's going on. So I've used muscle testing for years. I've used other bioenergetic scans and analysis. Um, all of them have their merits and their great benefits. And I'm supportive of many, many different technologies. You have to be able to analyze it. The reason I like Healy particularly is because people can have it in their homes and they can do it every day and they can do it with their kids and their pets and their uncle or their grandfather or whoever. Many, many people can benefit from one device. It's a continuous move towards the personal self. That's so important. That is part of sovereignty and agency is be, be your own personal self. And when you clear the emotional trauma out of the way, when you clear that energy that interferes you, with you making the, the best decisions for you as a person, as a sentient being, as an individual, as you clear all that interference out, guess what? You set boundaries and you bring healthy relationships on board and you clear things out that create stress. You choose jobs and, and work that you love and that brings you joy. All those things begin to blossom and you get to journey towards your personal self. And that to me is like as important as anything else. We do have to deal with stress. There are 26 programs for stress and related relaxation. We do have to deal with trauma. So there is an aura scan, there are chakra programs, there is Bach flower, bush, bush uh, uh, flowers, which I didn't even know existed until I heard about healing, gem elixirs. There's all kinds of different ways to work with and address the emotions. We are needing to approach things differently when it comes to illness and disease. Absolutely critically important that we do that on our own, okay? And I really do think the future is bright, guys. I, I know this is a really hard time in our history. We've never seen it this way, but I also know that we, have, we work in the construction industry, my family. You have to tear something down to build it up right, to renew it. And, and I see that happening now. So I think the future is bright because we have this momentum. We're now more aware than ever before of what we need to do. We're finding our voices. We're stepping up and saying, this is what's right for me and I'm gonna do that. And it, we've never before had the kind of tools and capability and knowledge that we have now. And we're sharing it more readily. I mean, there's online courses, there's all kinds of seminars. You guys have the ability to, to learn a tremendous amount for yourselves. And that to me is incredibly important because I got here and I helped my kids heal and I've helped my husband and many other people because I kept learning. I kept growing, I kept te uh, teaching myself and hearing from others. <sighs> Allopathy and even natural medicine is struggling to know what to do. And we have a big issue that's brewing that is going to affect a lot of people. And we're gonna need to have tools and ways to do that. And there are tools and ways. The nice thing about naturopathy is it's an open-minded perspective and it has a belief in the body's infinite ability to heal itself. 
because the body does have the ability to heal itself. I have seen incredible things heal, incredible things. The testimonies from people that have been using Healy, a, a lady who had an intracranial leakage from her, her spine into her brain, 10 surgeries, eight weeks using Healy, done. She's good. The energetic, emotional, and quantum is critically important to add in a very meaningful way. Oh, I know what that is. Um, <laughs> I was like, what is that video? Um, because it didn't show up. Uh, there is a great video. Um, if anybody wants to see it, you can come by. The booth is 517. We're all the way at the other end. Um, the, this video is, um, is a bunch of metronomes that start out disparate and all over the place, and then they come into resonance with each other. Um, we are doing scans, so if anybody would like to experience a frequency scan and what, the, what shows, please come by and do that. You have your blue slips of paper. That is a class, um, and there's a coupon on the back of it that I've given you guys half off on the class. It's, it's only a $25 class because I don't believe in, I believe in you having access to the tools. I want you to understand it for yourself and be able to use it for yourself and share it with whoever. Okay, so, um, and I have a QR code at the booth also you can scan and it's got some more videos that talk about frequency and the science behind it and other things if you have more information. So I think I have about three or four minutes to answer questions if there's any. Yeah. Yes, we can talk about that at the booth. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I have a whole program listing that, de that details the programs themselves. Um, and there actually is a promotion going on right now, so we can talk about that as well. Yeah. Do you teach people how to use the Yes. Absolutely. So um, I do one-on-one -on -one teaching, so that gives you how to use it, how to connect it with your device, and how to begin to use it, and then we expand the knowledge once you get comfortable with it, and then we keep broadening it out from there. I do classes on a regular basis as well, and there are written documents and lots of videos too. Lots of good information. In-person classes? If you're geographically close to Kalamazoo, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I teach primarily out of either Kalamazoo or Three Rivers, Michigan. Those are the two places I teach the most. I mean, I'm willing to come and travel, um, within reason, I do have a family and a farm to take care of, so I got piglets. <laughs> Tony? You said your dog laid at it. What exactly was So I have the Healy, and in this case, I had the coil on there because I can't put the wrist straps on him, the wires. So I put the coil on there, and he laid right on top of the Healy in the coil, so he was in direct contact with the frequency. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was Well, I didn't hook up the cords because I wanted my hands to be free, but um, yeah, so I have cords that would, would hook up to do the microcurrent. That's more physical. Um, so if I'm dealing with, um, like because of the 5G, I, I came up with a headache this morning. So I was running kidney programs this morning to help with the headache. Um, I will hook up my, son, my husband who has skin challenges, right? It's been going on for 25 years. So I'll hook him up to the skin programs, um, scar tissue programs, things like that. The resonance broadcast um, gets down into the quantum. So it's really dealing with the roots of all of the energetic um, supports, meridians and other things. Only if you want to use microcurrent. Other than that, you can leave it. Actually, I, you know, I've left it at home and turned it on to run for an hour and run a couple errands and come back. Um, you can have it running while you sleep. You can have it running while you work, do dishes, anything like that. So um, it is very, very flexible and easy to do. You're not required to be hooked up anything, but there are definite benefits to running the wires and the microcurrent. Is there any benefit to having it in a clinical setting where someone is coming in and you're doing the program on the No, I use it regularly in my client sessions. Um, it helps inform them as to what's going on in their own bodies. I then use it as a treatment add-on to when I'm doing a consult or when I'm doing a stress relief session. And then if I have people with physical issues, I will definitely encourage them to do a microcurrent session where they come in and they hook it up. And then they, they oftentimes they don't ever get an hour's break. So that, I call that their hour stress break. So, they so. Don't have to, we don't, you don't have to sell them to your... You don't have to, no. No, absolutely not. All right, I have one minute. <laughs> How long are your classes? 
Um, I try to keep it to under an hour. Um, it depends on how many questions somebody has, but we try to keep it to under an hour. If I'm, if I'm going somewhere and I have people asking questions and want to experience it and want to hook up, I've gone up to four hours, but just depends on the nature of the audience. You know, I'll answer, I know what county you do it. Okay. I used to have a Great. And so I know how long it takes to drive here Yeah, well, especially in traffic. Right. Well, in that case, I mean, we could arrange for a longer period of time. So if I know ahead of time people are coming in from out of town, I'm happy to block off a longer period of time. I'm all about education and the ripple effect. I want more people to experience controlling their health, being in charge, knowing what they need and having the tools that they need to get it done. So as I'm here to help. That's what I'm, that's what I'm in place here for. That's my mission.